is there a future for sports radio? Do you think? Well, I mean, when, you, when it started, you had to believe that it would go on forever and ever. Amen. That it was a format that was that people liked, that it was economically viable, even though it's costly. You had how many? 400, 500 sports stations, all sports stations in North America? Something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. I don't know how many there are now, but I'll bet there Le- aren't as many. Less, but still a lot. Yeah. Still a lot. So my my answer to you is yes. Um, what will change and what has changed is the distribution of it. What I what I think will will I think there will be only a certain amount of cities, Bob, that can have a 24-7 sports radio station, like New York, Boston, Philly. I think like those kind of markets, I think, at least in the near to medium term, can still can still sustain 24-7 programming of sports where they can make money on it, or at least a little bit of money on it. And I think they'll continue. Those stations are generally owned by bigger companies, you know, yeah. Odyssey or who you know, Whoever. I don't know who owns the Boston ones, but you know, you know my point. Like, you know, yeah, big media company. So that's sort of part one. So I think in some cities the short answer is yes. In other places, I think you would be looking at either abbreviated sports talk or, and this is the more likelihood, and again, this is sort of what uh, Sportsnet has already done. I think you're generally speaking creating content that is just for on demand, like you're creating podcasts at a certain point. So sports talk itself, like the what we are doing now, which I would consider sports talk, like that will continue long after both of us have passed. It's just what is the distribution form going to be? And my only thought is the distribution form has to be where someone provides the content and then you have the choice to listen to it whenever you want. I am in terms so, of. So, so this show, for instance, would be a radio show to be on at some point during the day, but then becomes a podcast where you, yeah. if you missed it during the day. You can listen to it. Correct. You like I think right. if, if, if you were doing like a lot of, you know, there's a lot of. Uh, very big shows now like Pat McAfee has one and others have one where they just essentially they're doing it essentially via like a YouTube kind of presence. Okay. So they right. do the, they do what we're doing now. You could watch it live. Like you, like, like if someone was able to watch us live right now, or they just listen to it uh, later, either by watching the video replay or they listen to it like, you know, via Apple, Spotify, right. same thing. The, the only thing different that you don't do is you, you don't, you're not, People can't watch us live right now, but all that is going to, that's sort of the but reality. The, they, they, all they have to do is wait a couple hours until we post everything. Correct. Right. So that, but I'm saying like, that's the, that's what sports talk is now and sort of heading forward is it's going to be people who decide on whatever the predetermined time is that they'll tape whatever they're going to do or, or film whatever they're going to do. Some people will listen to it at that time. I think the majority will sort of consume it afterwards. Where it's tricky for me to figure out is, let's take Toronto, for instance. Like, what does that mean in a city like Toronto? And will TSN and Rogers still have, like, some kind of live sports talk, which I could listen to um, if I am driving around or if I am in my house? You mean like the fan or TSN radio? Like the fan still has. My only thought is that, if they if Rogers is still involved in sports like the Blue Jays or the Raptors, I think they're still going to have a like an audio a live audio presence because I think it helps promote that product. If they ever got out of the sports owner ownership business, I think they would kill the radio stuff like that day. So I think that this yeah. is just my take. I, I don't. I, I, this I is think not there's some truth in that. Yeah. Yeah. My my thought is that a lot of what they do whatever is left now for audio and radio has as much to do with promoting the sports properties. And obviously it's promoting like the fact that they're a, they're a telecom, right? Promoting their, 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 their essentially that you need them to communicate in life. Um, so I think, yeah, I think, I, I think if you asked us, if you asked me five years from now, like will either TSN or Sportsnet have some kind of radio show where if I was in my car and turned it on, I could get it live. I, I think my answer would be yes. But I think I bet you it'd be less shows in five years than it is today. Like I would not be surprised if, uh, if I mean, if nothing else, they just they decide to just pick up some national show. Uh, you know, like I'm, they use U.S. I'm making this up. They use United States 
uh, sports programming from 10 a.m. to to well, that to was done 7 p.m. Yeah, and then they just they do they do the lot they have a morning show and then then they they do the Blue Jays or they do the Maple Leafs and that's it something like that I would that would not surprise me at all. I, I, it's gonna get I think they're I think everything seems to be gearing towards let the the least amount of dollars right that they can spend to put on any kind of programming and ultimately pick up is cheaper than paying yeah. live people to do it. Well, I don't know whether they still do because I don't listen to them, but TSN used to carry the Dan Patrick show. I think, I, yeah, I feel like I've, I, I don't, yeah, I should know this. I, I think they still do. Sportsnet. Dan Patrick. Sportsnet has CBS, Sp- CBS Sports Radio is there. Picking. Yeah, I know that that's overnight mostly. Yeah. But they, remember the sports babe? Yeah. They picked her up, right? We, we carry the sports babe. 10 wow. o'clock in the morning or something, 10 to 2 or something. Ridiculous. Did you guys ever have? Did you have ESPN Radio or uh, TSN? Must have because that's no TSN, story. who's yeah. partly owned by ESPN. That's right. Okay, so they got all their programming. Now again, th- this is this that kind of stuff is incredibly um, anti sports fan in Toronto. It's almost insulting to to it's have totally insulting because US, it has you, nothing to do with them. You're, you're you're driving around or whatever. Or you're listening to your home, and and it's an hour on the Dallas Cowboys when you're a Maple Leafs and Blue Jays fan. Or worse than that, some college football team. You're not, right? You don't yeah, it, it's an hour in Alabama versus Ohio State, and you don't care about this at all. Couldn't so, care less. Yeah. I, again, to me, if I was in charge, I do think there. I, I think we talked about this at Sportsnet. One of the things that always blew me away, and you know, who who the hell am I? Some stupid American who came up here. But when I came up here in 2018, the market, the sports podcasting market had still was in its infancy in Canada. Yes. And I could never believe that Sportsnet and TSN, with all the dollars that they had, just like did not decide to just be like, we're going to hire the 20 best audio people and producers in the world. We're going to get like all this on air talent and we're going to basically create our own podcast network and, and make a million billion dollars and dominate. Instead, what happened is they allowed the biggest podcast from America to come in, saturate the market. And so you look now and you might see like the Bill Simmons show or Spitting Chicklets or whatever. Well, yeah, there's still the Bob McCown podcast and there's still Overdrive. But it blew me away that no one decided to invest money to basically own that space. And it and everybody still is playing catch up. Uh, well, it points to I the think. stupidity of of management over the last five years in broadcasting. I just, I, I couldn't. That was one that I just, I couldn't believe. Well, how it. any of them have their jobs is beyond me. I don't know if any. I'm not. I mean, I think a lot of people have maybe don't have their jobs, but uh, you know, I, again, like people, you know, this like it's it's a tough business. Um, there's less jobs. It's people not that just, tough. You know what? <laughs> I'll, 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 it's it's really not a tough business. It's it's a logical business. Just look at what's going on around you and react accordingly. 